Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel again. Today we're gonna to talk about how to be the best second shooter that you could possibly be. I'm gonna give you some good tips and hints along the way. Meanwhile, click that like button, hit that subscribe button, and get ready for the next information to come to you about how to be the best second shooter that you could possibly be. Thank you for coming by the channel and taking a look at the content. Uh, I have a lot of videos that you can look up uh, on my page that will help you with either highlight films or anything else like that. But today we're going to talk about how to be the best second shooter that you can be. Now, I don't second shoot that often because I'm a primary shooter and I do 25 weddings per year. So there's really not a lot of opportunity to second shoot for other people. I want to, I've asked to, I've, you know, I've submitted for it, but um, for whatever reasons, it, it just didn't work out. Sometimes people feel like uh, as a primary shooter, why would you want a second shoot? Um, for me, sometimes it's just easier to just um, shoot, turn the cards over, and you're done. There's no editing. You know, when you're a primary, you got to get cards from somebody else. You got to back those files up. You got to edit all of those, call all of those. You got to go through all of that stuff over there. So sometimes it's a, there's a lot more work that comes into primary shooting. So second shooting, I want to say in a sense, is just a hair easier, but it's just as responsible. It's just as important as primary because I'm going to talk to you today about as a primary photographer, what I expect from and would like to see from my second shooter, okay? I've had the luxury of shooting with a few different people uh, and a lot of different skill levels when it comes to that. Uh, some people are just shooters uh, and they just that's, they don't want to do any weddings. They're going to come in and just shoot, give you your card, and they're going to go home. Other people are more, um, you know, do video and uh, stills. Um, and when they're with me, they just do the, the, the stills part of it. Um, but they're quite capable of doing absolutely epic videos. So there's a wide gamut of the amount of people that are out there. So if you're looking for a second shooter, have a few little requirements that come along. Now, some people say you got to be a certain brand, meaning if the brand is Canon, I'm a Sony shooter. Uh, everything I have is Sony triggers, flashes, lenses, everything. I have nothing any other brands. It doesn't matter to me if my second shooter is shooting Canon or Nikon. So try not to let that hinder you as a primary taking somebody else on and you as a secondary, oh, he's not gonna hire me because I shoot Canon or whatever. Um, just remember that um, the primary reasons why you're there is to first and foremost, to be an extra set of hands for the primary. So my first rule, first rule, first rule for a second shooter is number one, you gotta be on time. If the ceremony starts at 1.30, I'd like to see you there at one o'clock. You know why? Accidents happen. Meaning flat tires, wrong turns, GPS rerouting, all this different stuff that comes in, especially when I'm driving two and a half hours, I need to know that that guy's gonna be there at that time. And when you get there, call or text me. I know I'm doing the getting ready pictures. I'm gonna look, okay, great. My second shooter's there, perfect. It makes me feel better knowing my second shooter is there 30 minutes ahead of time. Just, your primary job, scope around. If it's inside of a church, go inside the church. Get your settings ahead of time. Uh, find that ISO shutter and do all that stuff that you need to do. So when that wedding starts, man, you're already ready to start shooting and you're not fidgeting and chimping back and forth trying to figure out where you need to be. So first and foremost, be on time slash pay attention. Don't be on your phone. Don't be on your phone. I, I don't know how many times I have not had any problems with any of my second shooters and nor do I want one. But if Uncle Bob is break dancing on the dance floor and I'm over doing details pictures with the rings, you best be getting that picture and not be playing on your phone. So pay attention to your surroundings. And I always tell my second shooter, hey, I'm going to do the rings, so I need you to watch the dance floor. I need you to do this. Now, when my second shooter is eating, 
I'm on the dance floor. I'm doing the rings. I'm doing the tables. I'm doing all that stuff like that. You eat. You go sit down. I don't eat. I sit down. I pick up my food. And it's one of the problems that I'm working on. I'm trying to get better at it. So be on time and pay attention to your surroundings at all times. Have that camera ready for whatever. Okay? Two, quality, 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 quality. Quality of your work will be one of the reasons you get hired as a second shooter or you don't get hired. Now, don't take it personal. Some people are very finicky when it comes to a certain look, okay? There is a difference in a hobbyist image and a professional image, okay? Especially when it comes to snapshots and things like that. Be ready for those candid pictures because 90% while I'm doing those formal pictures, I want you standing 20 feet on either side of me camera in hand and you're just snapping pictures of whatever they're doing. The kids are playing, people are over there having a couple of cigarettes or, or a couple of beers or whatever they're doing, the mingling, the laughing, the joking and things like that. And they're not noticing. Put that 200 millimeter lens on and just stand in the background and just get those candid shots. The bride and groom love those shots. When I'm taking pictures of the wedding party or just the bride and groom, get those shots on the side. So be aware, the quality of your work makes a difference. Get those moments all the way through. I always say this and I always say this and I always say this. Rule number three, always ready. A second shooter should have a camera on its waist at all times. Unless you're eating, camera on your hip at all times. Because if I'm looking this way and I'm taking pictures of that bride and groom, it is your job to be watching everything else around me. Well, that's so much responsibility. I'm just here to help. Yeah, help me not miss anything. Help me not miss anything. Always be ready, get the shot. Now, this is a very unprofessional thing for me to say, but I'm gonna say it anyways because it's the truth and it's the way I will do things. Cameras, can wig out sometimes. Not format cards or not have problems or anything else like that, but when you're shooting this way here and you're in the shade and they're coming down that aisle and they're, or they're coming down the aisle when it's an outside uh, outdoor wedding kind of thing like that and you're getting that shot and they're, they're doing really good and the second they pass you, I always turn around and I always get a back picture of them walking back down the aisle, okay? So now if I'm facing them this way and all the sun's coming at me this way here, beautiful skies, and so they're a little bit more backlit, okay? So you gotta adjust that shutter, kinda let a little bit more light onto their face as you're doing it. The second you turn around now, the light is on their back, so it's all sun. So now you gotta quickly adjust your shutter speed to not let so much light in. So this is all fundamentals you're supposed to know. So let's just pretend you know fundamentals of photography. So with that being said, I told, and I always tell my second shooters, don't fidget with your camera settings while intricate moments are happening. When that bride is walking down the aisle and your job is to get the groom's first look face of how he sees his bride coming down that aisle, the last thing I wanna see you doing is adjusting your settings at that time. Your settings should already be set. You're already focused. You've already got everything locked in. So when that moment happens, click, click, click. You got that tear coming down his face exactly that moment. Whatever happens. Sometimes nothing happens. Sometimes it does. But it's your job to get it. I don't care if you have to put it into, let's see, the green mode. Because every camera system, Nikon, uh, Sony, or Canon, that green button, that auto button, everything it does for you, I would rather see a shot like that, shot in auto, with that tear coming down his face, than you handing me a picture that is not properly exposed or missed focus. It is more important to me, you shoot in auto, you get me that shot, you get me that moment, the bride don't care what settings they are, don't miss the moment. Don't miss the moment. Get the shot. Very important. That was number two. Always be ready and get the shot. Number four. That was number three. Number four. There to help. So if you feel like it's below you and you're carrying $10,000 worth of gear on your hips and you feel like it's below you to not help 
move a bag or not help move a stand because you're better than that, um, then you're never going to shoot. You're never sec going to second shoot with me then. Um, I need, now again, this is what I would like to see inside of a second shooter. And when I second shoot for somebody I want, I want to do more of, you bet I will be saying, where do you want your bags? Do you need anything from your car? Would you like me to go get some water? Do you need something to drink? Do you want me to move that light? That to me is more professional than saying, oh, you know what, move your own bag. Go pick up your own lights. I'm not going to your car. You know what? That's not being helpful. So move the bags, move the lights, ask if they can help, ask if I can get you a drink, ask if I can get you something from your car. That's what a second shooter does. Now, oh, well, that's like, you know, you're being a slave. Um, nope, that's just being helpful. Sometimes it's so windy now that you need that flash pole to be holding still. And I'm sorry for 15 minutes, if you're just standing there holding that one light stand so the wind doesn't blow it around, tell you what, Hold it in your left hand, because that other hand in your hand is going to be that camera. And I want you to be able to get those shots that I need you to do when it comes, even behind the scenes shots. You want to get me in action? Great, that'd be awesome, kind of thing like that. But it's your job to get those things around. If you're too good and too above holding a light stand, you don't deserve to be second shooting. And you might be just helping somebody out, and I get that, and you're so much better than anybody else, I get that. But seriously, nothing wrong with helping people. Nothing wrong with helping people. So be helpful. Move the lights, move the bags. Number five, and anticipate their needs. You know we're going outside for that sunset picture. Anticipate, hey Ron, I'm gonna go outside with your flash and your pole and I'm gonna set it up on the right side or left side so that you're ready when you come out. So when I come walking out there, light's already there, light's already on, softbox is already facing in the area that I know that I'm gonna be facing as far as sunset, beach, doesn't matter what it is. All I gotta do is walk out there two minutes before the bride and groom, get my exposure triangle set for what I'm gonna to want to do, turn my trigger on, Pop that one flash, bang, I am ready to start shooting. Now, no second shooter, I'm carrying out my own bag. I'm carrying out my own light. I'm setting it up. Hopefully it's not windy out where I don't have to go get a sandbag or anything else like that. So anticipate that, hey, by the end of the night, Ron, I'm gonna start, you don't need those flashes anymore. I'm gonna start putting those poles down and I'm gonna start putting those flashes down. I'll start taking your empty, ba your bad batteries out, put them into a separate bag so that I, people won't pack my gear into my bags or my rolly carts. That's fine with me. But you know how helpful it is to go around the room and grab the extra things that I had left hanging around. I might've left a bag over there. The DJ's thing is over there. You know what I do at the end of the night? I actually walk around by the end of the night and help the DJ pack up his gear. Because DJs are 90% by themselves, just like photographers are. So I'm gonna go over there, especially if the ones that I know that I work with frequently, I'm gonna go, they got like 20 lights uplighting all across the room. I don't know how to shut them off, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm literally just picking them up, clicking the switch and bringing them back. And I'm not doing anything as far as packing, I'm just making a pile. Go over here, make a pile, go over here, bring it back. That's just being helpful. So be helpful and professional to the other vendors around, but your primary goal is to be a benefit to your primary shooter. Girl or boy, doesn't matter who it is, be helpful. So let's go over that list one more time. Be on time, 30 minutes is on time. 15 late, 15 minutes late of that ceremony that you missed, that second shooter. Um, if there's a situation, let me just go over this real quick, where you can't make it at the last minute, I need to know the night before, if that's even possible, okay? I had one second shooter, just got out of school, very eager to learn the business, very eager to go through all of that stuff. Man, I see, had all the right answers, had all the right settings, knew his camera like, like there was no tomorrow. Did some really, really great street photography but he wanted to break into something else. So I, I hired him as a second shooter. Um, called me up literally the night before and changed his mind and said he didn't want a second shoot. It left me screwed for the next morning to get somebody else because in my contracts, I've got second shooters, okay? What am I gonna do? I had no other choice but to turn around and say, 
call the bride and groom and say, listen, I've got a little bit of a situation. I did not tell them he quit. He didn't want to do photography. He changed his mind. I didn't even get into that. I'll tell you this though. I am a little bit more selective with people that second shoot for me, meaning you had to have shot for second somebody else. That tells me you've done this already. This guy was the first time he was doing it, thought that he wanted to do, my mistake, my bad. So I had to call the bride. I said, listen, I said, I apologize. Last minute thing, he can't make it for the second shooter. So according to my contract, I have this. I can't get anybody at this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do all the work, still get all the shots, still get all the images, do all the tables. I'm going to do all the stuff I normally would have somebody else do. I'm just going to do it all on my own. And I'm going to compensate you back his pay. So if I was paying him $500 for the night, I was giving the bride and groom back $500. If he was only there for half the night, it was only 250, 300, whatever the hourly rate was that they were not there, whatever I budgeted for, that money was going back to that bride and groom. Why? Because it was the right thing to do. I don't want a bride and groom coming back. Oh, he only showed up by himself, but he quoted me that second shooter. And that's what I wanted. I wanted those candidates. I wanted that cocktail hour coverage and things like that. So let's just, you got to be there and be ready to shoot at all times. So number one, on time, pay attention to your surroundings and don't play on your phone. Quality of your work speaks volume. When I see your work and I see the details that you have inside a thing, I was like, you know what? He can handle doing a second shooting. Uh, that's going to be the guy that or girl that I want to have by my side. Um, and if you need, I've taken a third shooter on with me because they wanted to learn. I've got no problem with doing that, you know? Um, number three, always be ready. Meaning in that moment, camera in hand, ready to go, hold on to that light, whatever you got to do, be ready at all times, get that shot. Don't fumble with the settings during those moments that their bride's first kiss or, or the groom's, uh, you know, shaking the, the best man's hand or they're tossing, they're not tossing in the rings, the handing over the rings. Don't miss those moments. If something's wigging out on your camera, go right to auto. Get the shot. Number four, move the bags. Be helpful. Move the lights. Can I get you something? Can I get you some water? Can I get you something from your car? Can I get you a snack? Can I get you some food? Whatever. Be helpful. It helps, it helps, it helps. Makes that much more of a difference. So I've taken anyway, another story. So number five, be helpful and anticipate the needs of the primary shooter. You know you're going outside, anticipate you're going to be taking that light out there and be ready when he says to go do this. When that cake smash or not, the cake cutting shows up and you know that you're going to need to be there. Make sure that second shooter, when I shoot, I'm always in the center. My second shooter is always to my left or always to my right. It doesn't matter to me. I'm always in the center. When I go out of the center to this side, my second shooter comes to the center. Now he's getting a different view while I'm getting this view. When he goes back over here or up at the top, I'm back in the center. If I go to the center because I want to get the groom's face, he's going to go over here to the other side and get the, the bride's face. And sometimes, well, if you already got the bride's face, you don't need the bride's face again. Expressions change along the time of the wedding. That whatever the vows are being said on the right, when, uh, from the groom, the second shooter is over here on this side. So anticipate the needs. Know where I am and know where you need to go and go anywhere you want to go. Be quiet, be silent, shut your phone off. Don't walk with squeaky sneakers or anything like that. Be professional. You dress with a shirt, a tie or a shirt and dress pants, anything else like that. Um, so with that being said, that's all five. So Hopefully this was helpful to you. It's a little bit longer than what I anticipated it was going to be, but there's so much information. I want to help you be the best second shooter that you could possibly be. So click that like button, hit that subscribe button. More videos coming in the future about different topics. I'm going to start doing some product reviews and I actually got hired to do some product um, photography. I'm also getting involved with some realtors now. So I created up a pricing list for the realty companies that I'm going to be sending it out to and approaching them because in their overflow, somebody else might not be available. So look for those opportunities. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Put those comments down the bow, click below, click that like button, click that subscribe button. And remember, smile more, it hurts less.